how you can get good serviced accommodation, rent to rent deals right now. Hello, my name is Mark Fitzgerald and today I want to welcome you to a coaching call. This is a coaching call that I've had with a client of mine, Ellie, who is on our serviced accommodation business builder training. Now, Ellie was struggling to get deals. Ellie was struggling to, to speak to landlords and agents. Now, not in the sense that she was struggling with fear of going to speak to people. No, you'll see in this interview that Ellie is a very confident young lady. She is happy to go out there and speak to people, but she was struggling to get her ideas across to them, how she was gonna structure the deals, how she was actually going to make the deals work with the agents and with the landlords as well. So uh, she was on one of our group coaching calls talking about this. We help people on our group coaching calls, on our training products, on our training programs as well. But I just asked Ellie if she would be kind enough to have a Zoom call with me where I could speak to her about the issues that she's having and see if I can help give her some pointers and point her in the right direction. And I am absolutely delighted to say and thank Ellie for agreeing to do this and for allowing me to share this with everybody. This isn't stuff that we share with everybody, but this is one of my one-to-one -one sort of level coaching uh, that I help and support people with. Just a little part of it that I'm gonna share with you all today. So equally on top of that, I would like to also say that we did this about a month ago and I am delighted to say that Ellie has signed her first rent to SA agreement. She has taken the property on. She is busy beavering away now, getting the property up and running, ready and sorted to be obviously marketing it to her clients. And then once she has done that, we will be asking her to come back onto this channel uh, and share with us how she got the deal and if what we went through in this session really did help her. But enjoy this session now. I'm sure you're gonna get some great tips from all of this. Grab yourself a notepad, grab yourself a pen, and let's begin. Hello, and today I'm joined by Ellie. And Ellie is starting out on her service accommodation journey. She is uh, out there talking to agents, talking to landlords, but she's finding it very, very difficult. So I wanted to get her uh, on a call uh, and just really go through fundamentally what she's doing, how she's doing it, and see how we can tweak things to help her to get out there and obviously build up the know, like, and trust and get in there and speak to agents. So thank you for doing this, Ellie. It's great to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That's all right. That's all right. And of course, we'll keep this as natural as possible. It's just you and me chatting and everything. I know it is recording and sometimes that can be a little bit daunting and stuff, but it really is, um, you know, you're in a comfortable space and things and I genuinely want to help you. So if you uh, just tell us, you know, how, how you're feeling at the moment and sort of what you're trying. Yeah, so I'm trying both sort of direct to vendor and through agents just to try and get some leads. Um, but at the minute, I just feel like I'm taking three steps forward and four steps back. Um, nothing seems to be working. I feel like I've got one and I'm ready to go with it. And then all of a sudden it just drops off the side of a cliff. <laughs> um, okay, okay. Yeah. I'm, 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 why do you think that is? Um, I don't know. I think it could be something that maybe I'm saying. Um, am I not saying the right things? Is it something that's maybe putting someone off? Um, I don't, honestly, I don't know. So if you don't mind then, if I, I know it puts you on the spot a bit and stuff like that, but let's just say um, you've reached out to me. I'm a landlord. I've got a, a house. Like I've got yeah. two, 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 up, two down house that potentially would work well for your service accommodation. Uh, you've reached out to me, maybe messaged me or something like that. Uh, and I've rang you up just to find out more. Um, so I say, uh, hi, is that Ellie? Hi, hi, yeah, it is Ellie. Am I speaking to the landlord? And then obviously they'd say, yeah. Um, and I'd say, so I've just jumped on a call with you. Um, we were speaking over Facebook or Gumtree, um, and I noticed that you had an apartment or a house for sale. And they'd say, yeah. Um, and then I'd sort of say, um, so I, I've got something that I might be able to potentially offer for you. Um, please let me know if it's something you're open to. I like to use like open to as if like it's their idea, if that makes sense. So they sort of get on board with me. 
Um, so I sort of say, are you open to the idea sort of, I can guarantee you rent, um, I can take it on for three to five years, we cover management, um, so you've got no management fees to pay, so if I take full control, it's sort of hands off for you, so you're just getting a passive income, um, and I sort of say, I'm looking for the house, because I accommodate people that are working in the area that are local professional people. Um, we have M NHS workers and Amazon workers um, and builders that are in the area. Sort of, we house them just while they're semi-permanently staying up in the area. Um, and that's sort of what I'm going for. To okay, and what, what, what sort of part, uh, what, so what sort of responses have you had from that? um some some people are like can I have more information I'm like yeah absolutely like I'll come to the address and we can talk um because I think I'm a much more so like I'm so much more approachable in person um so I tend to go down to the houses and have a bit of chat with them um and some of them will sort of be like no it's not for me which it's totally fine it's not for everyone um but I try to do as much as I can in person I'll just sort of be having a bit of chat with them about sort of basically how much more beneficial it is for the landlord if they were to use us, for example, they're not sending no eviction notices if they don't want them in the house anymore. Um, so I'll sort of make that known. Maintenance fees, like we cover minor maintenance. So we've got quite a good team, like all my family's dead on board. Um, so plumbing and stuff, my dad's a plumber, like, if we can help, we're just going to help. There's no point like ringing up um, them. I'll obviously make them aware and I'll say, like, we've got a leak. Are you happy for us to sort it? But it's just sort of letting them know how much easier it is if they have us. It's sort of what I'm going for. OK, OK. Well, no, it sounds good. It sounds good. I think it's really just a way of getting the wording in there. A lot of the times you've got to sort of build up that conversation, but get them agreeing with you whilst yeah. you're talking. So, you know, jumping on the phone or whatever and just saying, oh, thank you ever so much for your time today. I appreciate uh, that you're probably very, very busy. But uh, we just wanted to reach out to you today because we are a potentially a relocation firm or we house short term rental bases, contractors mm -hmm. in the local area. And we're looking for properties in the area that you currently have, uh, obviously, your property for sale or for rent. Um, and, and we are a, a team, a management firm that comes in here, totally looks after the property on your behalf. And we maintain it to the highest of standards. And of course, make sure that you get uh, a guaranteed rent in the process for us being able to do that. Would that be of something of interest to you? And of course, by doing something like that, they're either going to say yes or no, but you're not like almost like throwing everything at them from the word yeah. go. So it's almost like just saying, you know, we come in here, we take all the hassle away, we remove everything, we we keep your property to that highest standard, obviously for capital growth for yourself and for your asset. And of course, we house our clients in the properties. And that's the reason why we manage the properties to such a high standard, because we have clients in the area that are looking for these types of accommodations. So we could remove the hassle. I see that your property has been on the market a little while. I know the market is a bit stagnant. Uh, but whilst, you know, you're waiting potentially to sell this, maybe leave it a couple of years, let the market go up a bit, get more capital growth. But in the meantime, have us look after your property for you. Uh, would that be something that uh, you'd like to find out more about? So it really is <laughs> smiling. I'm glad you're smiling. Uh, it really is, though. It's just working on that approach to sort of ask them a question before you say this is everything that we do. Yeah. Because I did that. I used to say. I, I, first few phone calls I had were absolutely car crash. Nobody will ever have as bad a phone calls as mm -hmm. I had. But do you know what I did after every call? I sat down and I wrote down what went well and what didn't. Where did the conversation start to go a little bit like, oh, no, I'm not bothered now. They tried to get me off the phone. Mm -hmm. Now, the first time, if if it wasn't me on the on, talking on the phone, if it was me on the I'd have hung up on myself because it was yeah. that bad. <laughs> questions and things that I was asking. But I was trying to tell them everything. So what I try and do is entice them to say to me, well, how does that work? Because all of a sudden then they're interested. Yeah. They've asked me to tell them how that works. So it is a case of just getting out there and just saying, this is how we can help you. Is that of interest to you? If you get a yes, it's almost like you can move them along a, a line, if you like. So that's step one. Step one is either a yes or a no. If it's a yes, happy days. If it's a no, then we're off the call. Uh, and I always yeah. like 
end the calls just by saying thank you again once again for your time today please remember us if uh, if you ever change your mind because we are still looking for properties in there and i might reach out to you again would that be okay they might say yes they might say no but if they say yes you've just got permission to give them a call in a few weeks time yeah in which case you can say i'm just following up because of the call we had before and you said it was okay to do so you get them to start giving you permission and the more yeah. time someone say yes to you the more chance you've got to get the deal yeah and don't worry if they say no. We go for no. No's, no's great. I tell you, no is the most honest word in the English language because it lets you know where somebody stands. Yeah. No. Uh, a lot of people will beat around a bush and just say, well, maybe. Da, da, da. I'd rather have a yes or a no. Just tell me. If it's a no, that's fine. I'll leave you to get on with your day. That's great. So it really is about just trying to move them across and get that yes. So once they've said uh, yeah, that actually sounds quite interesting. Can you tell me more? That is when you can, you know, go into your other bit to say, um, you know, in most cases, I would say most cases we offer a guaranteed rent or we can just manage the property like uh, like letting agents do. But we do it on a short term rental basis. Now, we can. Um, the reason we offer a guaranteed rent is because some landlords like that security. They like to know what they're going to be getting each month. Obviously, if we do it on a management basis, then uh, that can fluctuate up and down. So it really does depend on what you fancy. Now, by doing that, nobody else will be out there, unless they've listened to this, doing that, uh, offering mm -hmm. those two options. They'll, they'll just be going down the guaranteed rent thing. And if they've heard it before, yeah. it's like, well, but all of a sudden they might just think, oh, hang on a minute, I've got some options here. So I got a choice. It's not just you're trying to fit a round peg into a square hole. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah. So it's saying we've got those options there. We take care of the minor maintenance issues of the property because obviously we've got to be very proactive with our clients there because they demand uh, uh, and have high expectations. But of course, that means that your property then is looked after. You could let your property for 12 months to a tenant, but you probably know by being a savvy landlord yourself and always big them up uh, that. After 12 months, you know, they move out. You probably have to redecorate paintings and yeah. things like that. Of course, the wear and tear goes higher. So as I say, this really does is a win win because it looks after your properties as well. But we we house only the best clients in there. Only and most of the time, if you're going for contractors as well, you could say most of the time the property will actually only have people in it Monday to Friday. Not very often people are in it over the weekend because it is contractors that we have. So they tend to go home. So, you know, there's no problems with neighbors and, and any issues like that. Uh, and we come in there, we, we cover the whole situation. You can get on with your lives uh, with a set rent or a management fee. And we'll only really contact you if it's something that uh, it, we just need to ask your permission on or find out more about it. But that, that is very few and far between. So once you've done that and they put you put that across to them, you can then just say the, the, the next steps are, are very, very simple. It would be lovely if we can meet you in person, potentially even just have a quick look at the property with you. Uh, and then, of course, we can have a coffee or something like that and just see if, if this is right for you. It might not be. And there's no you know obligations to anything like this. But it'd be nice to come meet you, have a look at the property and let's see if we can work together. And that, that, that if, you, if you've got that far, you're normally you normally yeah, it's very rare that you get that far and then they back out because you've made it in such a non- uh, salesy manner that you're giving them options and maybe you shouldn't give them so many options. People have said to me, we give them a lot of options to get out. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I don't want to be speaking to people or wasting my time or their time, you know, yeah. trying to push people into something that they're not going to do. So it is really along those lines of doing that. And of course, that's what I would do to vendors. Obviously, agents are a different beast. And we'll we talk about agents in a minute. But just your, your reaction to what I've just gone through there. What are you what are your first thoughts? Um, I feel like when I listen to myself talk in my head, yours flows so much better. Um, and it's it's giving them, I know I, I said that I try and give them the option, but yours literally does give them the option. So there's so much that it's it's hard for them really to say no, because you've given them, a, like you've set out like a mint deal. Well, yeah. But they can say no. They can say, oh, no, 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 it's not for me. In which case, yeah. then, as I say, it, at any point, if they say, nah, I'm not really interested in that, all I ever say then is, I'll tell you what, once again, 
thank you ever so much for your time. All of a sudden, why? Because they've let me down, but I'm still being overly nice to them. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. And please remember us in the future because we are here to help. We like to help people. And I always do actually end the call by saying, listen, if you do have any property problems, it is our job as and our company values are to help, are to be property problem solvers. So we are more than happy to help or point you in the right direction if we can. But feel free to reach back out to me. You've got my number. Uh, and, and like I say, at the very, very end, it's just one of those. Seeing how that goes, they might just be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it would be great to just be able to follow up with you in maybe, you know, three or four weeks time just to see how you're getting on uh, and to see if anything's changed. Mm -hmm. And of course, like I say, it's a yes or a no. Uh, no, mm -hmm. no, no, that's all right. We won't need it. Fine. Brilliant. That's the one. Put a cross through it. Move on to the next. Or yeah, 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 yeah that's not a problem. Uh, and of course, then the money is in the follow up. Uh, and I've had mm -hmm. more deals through follow up than, than not. But um, yeah. yeah, it gives them options. So all of a sudden it gets them thinking they're not being sold to. Nobody likes to be sold to is what I've found. Yeah. Um, we always, it's just a natural reaction, I think, for everybody, because we go back to the old used car dealers or when you used to walk into those shops or when you go abroad and you walk into some of those shops. And of course, uh, you know, uh, places like Turkey and things are terrible for it. They're on you like a whore, can't they? And it's like, I only wanted to look, uh, you know, and they're like, you, you buy this, you buy that. And it's just like, oh, I'm not <laughs> buying a thing, now I'm going. Um, and we just got to make sure that when we get on calls and we speak to people and we're in person, that they're not feeling that. They're not feeling that pressure that we're just mm -hmm. easing in. And also, and I know I'm harping on a bit here, it's the desperation thing as well, because I know yeah. when we're starting, I know when I was starting out, you want that deal. Come on, I just need to get that first deal over the line. But if they sense that, it's it's like, um, you know, this, this, this is really important to me, this call. But if you just go into it as a friendly thing, smiling away, it doesn't matter. Whatever happens, happens on this call. Then it's almost like, you're not, um, it's almost like you're almost saying to them, you know, does this sound of interest to you? Because if it doesn't, we'll just go somewhere else. It's not a problem. Rather yeah. than, you know, we, we need to make this happen. Because when you actually approach it like that, or get into the habit of approaching it like that, then you'll find as well that people are like, well, no, I'm interested in that. And if they're still looking for people and stuff, you know, I always say we only need a handful of properties. And once we're full, we're full. And of course, then it'll be a bit of a waiting list, which we've had in the past. But right here, yeah. right now, we're looking to work with people like yourself. I say that to agents as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when it comes to agents, mm -hmm. what's your um, spiel for them? I feel like I'm a bit more cautious with the agents because I feel okay. like... When I, I feel like I start and I talk about, um, if I talk about renting a house down, they'll just automatically shut me down. But I tend to go, to be honest, I tend to go in with looking at a house to buy. And yeah. that's normally how I start with it because I just find them so much more friendlier. So I'll normally go in and I'll say, I've seen this house to buy. Um, can, I, can I view it or, or whatnot? Can I have some more information? And I'll just say, actually, why I've got you on? Um I run a co I, basically I run a company that um, houses for short term stays. Um, do you work with people that do things like that? Um, and you'll go into the big ones and the automatically like no, we don't do anything like that. Um, some of them that I've gone into, they're like, how long has your company been operating for? If it's not been operating for three years, then like we won't work with you, which is fine. Like I say, and then it's just going into the little ones. That sort of the little ones you find out when you're networking as well. So they sort of when you're at these networking events, they know a bit more about it. Um, so I've got one not too far away that I'd mentioned it to him, and he was like, "Yeah, like I'm on holiday, but when I get back, give me a ring because like it could be something we could potentially work with you on because it's less hassle for them, really, isn't it? As well because they're not having to go to the houses as much as they are going to like a single let. Um, so I'm finding that the little ones, I can sort of use more of the corporate lets and sort of say what we do a bit more black and white as opposed to like trying to use all these words and like, do you know what I mean? So let's talk about when you're talking to an agent, um, when you're looking at buying the prop, uh, like buying the property. So you go in there, you, you pick a property uh, and you go in there and you, you speak about it and then, because uh, that that is a tricky one. I've always found that with estate agents. I like it. I like the challenge. Yeah. But it's difficult because estate agents they want to sell it and get their fee. Uh huh. 
and, and, and it's trying to say to them, well, I tell you what, if the landlords rent this out and everything, it's almost like saying, well, we'll pay your fee. So what I yeah. always do say to people is before, because some estate agents have a set fee, which could be about 1200 quid or, or 1500 quid. Now, if you can get a profitable deal off of them, that's not going to cost you a fortune to set up or potentially mm. even a landlord will set it up and you have to pay 1500 quid for that lead. That's not too bad. That's not no. too bad. And they'll be more inclined to come and see you again. But sometimes they have a percentage of the sale and things and it can it can spiral and, and get out of there. So I always do say, try and find out, even if you just ring these agents up and just say, I'm thinking of selling my property, what are your fees? Uh, uh -huh. And then just make a little spreadsheet of noting all the different fees. So that if, it, if you do ever get a deal with them, you know what they're likely to want for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, just just explain to me then. So you go in there, you say, I look at this and then you just go into them and you tell them that you're going to manage the property. And then they're a bit like, well, that's not what we do. It. Um, so I've been looking on um, property, property filter with yep. Gillian. Um, so that's bringing in sort of all the purchase lease options and the rent to rents. And sort of what I'm seeing is they're pretty much like both options are the same so i've got two options like i'll go in and sort of i'll i'll talk about the property um and then they'll sort of say well it's up up for rent too and then i'll sort of ask what's the landlord's situation um are they are they looking to sell it what is the reasons for selling it and the majority of the time they are looking to sell it because they've obviously got all the properties in the personal name so it's just not working like with like tax and everything at the minute. Um, so I'll go in and I'll say, well, I am interested in buying it. However, obviously depending on the landlord situation, would he be open to keeping it for a few years if I was to take it off, take the rent off him um, and sort of cover everything and he still gets all of his, like he gets his rent, he can potentially get a bit more as well. Um, because I'm going to be managing the property. Um, and then sort of if they say no, I'll, I'll try my luck because I'm at the point now where I just think I'm just, I can only ask because they can only say no. Like no is the worst thing that they can say. So I'll say, no. well, would they be open to selling the property? I'll pay all their legal fees and things, but they won't get the money until five years down the line. So sort of a purchase lease option sort of thing. No, that's good. That's good. That is good. So it's it really is the pain point. So first and foremost, particularly if you've built up that rapport and got those connections, that's brilliant. Priceless, that is. Uh, yeah. You want to make sure, you know, Christmas times and stuff like that, they're getting a bottle of something, whether you've done a deal with them or not, just to keep them mm -hmm. sweet. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, some nice pack of chocolates or something. Um, but realistically, it's, it's about just saying to them, I mean, it's almost like, forget the property. I need the motivated seller that doesn't need the money now, so to speak. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I need, I need yeah. that. So if you come across somebody who's got a half-decent property somewhere, um, if you can let me know, or the address or whatever like that, just to see if it suits the areas that we're looking, or let them know what the areas are that you're looking, give them the full criteria rundown mm -hmm. and just say, if you, if you find somebody that's just selling because they're just looking to get out of the game, they're fed up, but the property just seems to be sticking at the moment, or maybe the sale's fallen through, then we could potentially go and offer them another option, uh, i.e., you know, we take it off their hands, but we'll buy it off them in the future. So one of the best things to do there and to say there is we're quite happy to work with landlords. We're quite happy to buy the property. I think a lot of the time by saying, um, you know, they don't get the money now, that puts people off. So try not yeah. to say that. Yeah. So and you, maybe you don't. Maybe it's just because you're explaining it to me, which is fine. But it's it's really about not really talking about the money. What what it is 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 just saying that we can give you the price that you want because at the moment, you know, maybe they're getting silly offers. Maybe they can't yeah. do that. Uh, but, but saying, I tell you what, if you give us, we, we'll pay the price that you want if you can give us the terms that we need to do the deal. Yeah. And they'll say, well, what are the terms you need? Well, right now we don't have uh, enough money in the business to be able to purchase the property, but we will have in three to five years time. Now, three to five years can sound like a long time, but it'll fly by. But what we can do in the meantime is we can pay a set lease fee for mm -hmm. uh, running the property. We'll look after the property and we'll take on all responsibility for the property as well, because we'll lock this in with solicitors. And what we do is a purchase lease. OK, 
it's a purchase lease option, but you can do a purchase lease as well. It depends whether you want to stick the option in there as well. Now, what I say with the option, because everybody always says with the option, well, what happens if you don't buy it? And that always gets, gets, that used to get me. It don't get me anymore. So I always say we do a purchase lease. So we lock in the purchase price now. We yeah. lease the property off you. We take full responsibility for it. You get a nice fee each month. And then we put an option in there for when I buy it. Now, the reason we do an option is, and we make the option assignable, is because I have a circle of investors around me and we are always looking at buying properties. This is a perfect property. I'm even going to put some of my own money into this property to give it an uplift so that we can serve the clients that we need. So, you know, your assets looked after because we do short term rentals. We don't do the other stuff. Um, so it's not like a buy to let that's going to get banged around. But what we do with the option is if for any reason in the time where I can actually go and do the deal, I can't do it. I can assign that to one of my investor friends who will buy it and I'll continue to manage it anyway. But it just means that that purchase is more likely to happen and go through. So yeah. you don't have to worry about us handing you the property back, which at the end of the day would be the worst case scenario. But you'll have had three to five years of this lease each month. Your property will be maintained to the highest standards. Why? Because it will be in our contracts to do so. And we will have taken away the complete hassle. So does that sound like something that we could work with with you? Or are you in a different situation? And of course, if you say it like that, it's not like, do you need the money now? Because that's what we're thinking. Yeah. Do you need the money yeah. now? Um, and of course, if you get in the agent and you can say to your agent, I mean, that's, that's really good. That's a good one to do if you don't have the information. If you have the information and you know they don't need the money now, then you could say, well, this is a way for you actually to make more money. Because what we normally... So there's a few, I'm getting it carried away. So sometimes I'll say that and I'll say, right, what we'll do is we'll pay you a set lease fee each month and then that comes off the end price. So you're getting basically installments for your property until we, uh, um, until we serve the option then to buy. Yeah. Or you can say if, if they're really, you know, hardborn and not going for it, just say not only will you get the price that you want for the property, but if think about it, you're actually going to get more than that because the lease fee that we pay you over the next three to five years could potentially mean that you have, you make an extra fifty to a hundred thousand pounds in that time. So your property is up for sale for two hundred thousand pounds, three hundred thousand pounds. If we actually look at how much the lease fee will be over that time, you're up another fifty grand. So you're actually selling your property for three hundred fifty thousand pounds. Mm -hmm. But you yeah. just need to let us do it on our terms. Yeah. But that's worst case scenario. Yeah. So how does that sound? Yeah, good. I feel like. I'm just, I just feel like I just blur everything out. And I feel like the more I get out and do it, the better I'll get. But it's nice for someone else to like, like say like how it is, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, so, the, the, yeah. I mean, the whole reason for this is just to sort of try and steer, because you, you, talking to you, you've got the fundamentals there. You've got the confidence, which is brilliant. That's half the battle. It's yeah. having the confidence to be able to go and talk to people. But one of the things, you'll have heard the expression as well. I hear it all the time because I like to talk. I like to talk. And that was one of my biggest downfalls when I was doing negotiations and things. Yeah. I never liked that awkward silence. So I would always look to fill it in. But sometimes when you're doing negotiations, you've just got to say, how does that sound? And if you get that awkward pause, you have to not be the first one to say anything. Yeah, you've just got to leave it for them to answer, because if you go and answer for them or then try and give them another option, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. So you've just got to say, how does that sound? Go quiet until they and they will. They'll tell you quite quickly because they won't like it any more than than you do. But it mm -hmm. really is just about making sure that, you, like I say, you're giving people all the options to say no. But if they don't say no, you've then all of a sudden got yourself a warm lead. And that, and that is, is, is priceless at the end of the day in, in this game. Because yeah. people, that, that's when you can start saying to them, all right, to get back to you, all right, to give you a call here. And then, of course, it's all about follow up. And I'll touch on that mm -hmm. in a second. So, yeah, it's, it's two ears, one mouth for a reason is the old expression. You'll have heard it. I hear it all the time. And I, it took me a long time to get used to that because, uh, Mark, just shut up. You know, sometimes <laughs> I probably, I've, I've actually talked uh, my way out of a deal. I've had a deal in the bag and I've just kept going. Do, 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 do. And people have just like, oh, no, I've had enough now. Do you know what I mean? So sometimes it's just a case of what are your thoughts? You tell me what you're thinking and try and entice them to actually start talking rather than just saying, well, sounds good. Uh, and, and never be it's corny as you like. But a mentor told me this once and it does work sometimes when the conversation is really not going anywhere and you cannot find it. I always say to them, listen, let's have a bit of a laugh and a joke here. If I could wave a magic wand now 
and we could sort your property out in the best manner for you, what would that be? Mm -hmm. And then you go quiet. And yeah. see what they say. And they normally say, well, I just want to sell it. I just want, you know, 50K uh, or whatever. But you will find out what people want then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So have you got any questions with that? No, I don't. I think you've answered them all, to be honest. I think I'm probably just a talker. And I think you've mentioned follow up. And that's probably where I am lacking. Okay. Okay. So what do you store your follow-up procedure on? Where do you, where do, where do you have, like, I called this agent, um, they said this, uh, and I need to follow up in a week or two's time. Um, Holly Jennings, CRM system. Yeah. Property pipeline. Brilliant. Uh, she showed yeah. me a few weeks back. I had it on their podcast as well, but no, it's a really good piece of kit that. So that's good. So you have a system mm -hmm. to have it in there. Uh, yeah. does it, and it notifies you as well when to follow up with people. So yeah, what, yeah. what's your, on the leads that you have that you're following up on, is that normally with agents or are we talking with landlords as well? Um, I've got three rent to rent landlords that I'm in touch with. Um, so I am, I feel like I am constantly following up with them. Okay. So, so the three rent to rents, where, oh, we'll just talk about one of them, the best one maybe. Where are you up to? Um, so I met the lady out networking. She's got, basically she's got the she's got eleven properties. Um, she's been doing it full time, and I think she's just at the point now where she just doesn't want to manage it all herself. It's just a bit too much. Um, it sounds like she's sort of doing all the cleaning and everything herself. Um, so it sounds chaotic. So I met her out networking, and we do a circle of death. And where we all basically stand up and say what we're looking for, how we can help other people. And she stood up and said, I'm looking for someone that wants sort of to manage my properties. So I went up and spoken to her. But I've, so we did have a meeting. We were meant to go out yesterday. Um, and then before that, it was a week ago. But she just seems like the properties are just taking over her life. Um, and she's just got loads on. So I am just constantly following up with her saying like sort of, when are we when are we going out sort of thing and she's totally up for it but i just think she just hasn't got a minute by the sounds of it okay okay well first things first they need to rename that circle because the circle of death is not very cool is it <laughs> <laughs> circle of power or circle of network or something like that circle yeah. of death let's all get in a circle of death all righty yeah. i bet that's why this poor lady feels so basically what um what you need to be maybe looking at is to say to her when are you next at the property and i'll come and give you a hand yeah. Just go and help her at one Maybe. of her properties. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? I can run a hoover around or something like that. Just gets you in there. You can see what they're yeah. all about. It gets that conversation going. Of course, you're offering something for nothing. She's going to feel mm -hmm. obliged then to get hold of you because she's going to think, oh, you know what? That's really nice of her, isn't it? She doesn't yeah. have to do that. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost is look at where they're struggling and then see if you can get an instant win by going in and helping them. And that's not being disgenerous or anything like that. That's just offering a service. Like I say, we're property problem yeah. solvers. So the yeah. next thing is, Obviously, um, are you messaging her or ringing her? So I've been messaging her because although she's got all these properties and seems chaotic, she's always on holiday. So I did ring her and she was like, I'm in Spain. Put the phone down. It's going to cost you. So I just, I've just been messaging her. And do you get replies from the messages? Yeah, they're normally a day or two late, but she does always get back to me. Yeah, we, you've just got to try and stop that. So when's the next meeting that she might be at? So she gets back from Portugal next week. So she's asked if I'll go meet her up in Gateshead so we can sit down for coffee. So right, she cool. said, could I sort of message her next week and we can put something in her diary? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Or if she's going to do that networking meeting again, it's either saying, can we meet before or after? Yeah. You know, if you yeah, can put yeah. a little bit of time in the, in the diary, just give us 20 minutes, half an hour, and let's have a chat here. She might be up for the rent to rent, no hands and all of that guaranteed rent thing. If she's doing service accommodation herself at the moment, which it sounds like she is, mm -hmm. um, then it might be a case of getting in there with management yeah. as well. Just so we can go in there and manage it with you. Uh, we do look to joint venture with people and stuff like that as well. We can offer you rent to rent, but give her a few options. Yeah. So that you sound a bit different because managing 11 properties is very, very profitable for you as well. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. And she might be like up for that. Oh, yeah. I don't mind that. I don't mind that because obviously rent to rents on what she's, if she's already doing it, she knows what she's earning. She's not going to want to start losing profit. Let's take another one that you're following up with then. Another one is a tricky one. So she's a deal sourcer 
Um, and she's got 20 units in Sunderland. Um, I went and had sort of a bit of a bit of chat with her when because she was hosting the networking event. So before I left, um, I sort of I was at work at 10 o'clock and it was like 9:30 and I was like 45 minutes away. So I went and had a bit of chat with her and I was like, I'm sorry, I've got to leave. Um, however, I'm looking to do service accommodation, and she was sort of, Yeah, yeah, we can totally help you with that. Um I'm looking for someone that can manage 20 units in Sunderland for us, but I want a, I want a company that's already running. I thought, right, I know someone that's got a company that's already running. So I ran Helen and I was like, listen, Helen, she's got 20 units. She wants to manage in your company. Like you've been running for three years. Let's sort something out. And she was like, yeah, totally. That's fine. Um, we'll put them all under my company. Um, you get the bookings and you take the profit for the bookings sort of will go 50 50 on it which anything's better than nothing do you know what i mean um, so then i've been messaging her and she's just really bad at getting back to me and i don't know whether that's because she's so big and busy or genuinely because she's sort of not into it and she just hasn't said no yet so what you want to do then is, is stop messaging and ring ring is always better Ring her up, and if she doesn't answer, you always leave a message. So you always leave right. a message. Hi, it's Ellie from, you know, or whatever your, your company is or whatever like that. Uh, we're interested to speak to you. I know you're having an issue with those 20 units. It's uh, 3 p.m. Monday, uh, and as I say, I know you're busy. So what I'll do is I'll try again tomorrow at 10 a.m., uh, and hopefully I'll manage to catch hold of you then. Do feel free to ring me in the meantime if you get a spare minute. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Speak to you soon. And yeah. then the next time in the morning, you do the you, 10 o'clock, you ring her. Boom. Yeah. And if you get the answer phone, you say, right, it's 10 a.m. You are a busy person. You have a little laugh. <laughs> and a gym. Listen, I'm not trying to hassle you or anything like that. I'm just trying to make this as easy as possible for you because I believe I've got a solution that can really, really benefit you. And I've seen the yeah. quicker I can tell you it, the better. So I'll try again this afternoon at 3 p.m. And by keeping giving them a deadline, what you will find is that somebody will listen to that. They'll get, might get the first one if they're trying to avoid you. They'll get the first one and I'll think, oh, yeah, they're going to ring tomorrow. They probably won't. You'll ring tomorrow. They'll still avoid you. They'll get the next message and I'll think they're not going to quit. So <laughs> you'll either get saying, oh, no, 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 it's, it's sorted now, not a problem, and you can stop. Or they'll ring you and say, oh, yeah, yeah, thanks thanks for keep calling me. Yes, uh, I have got this issue. Let's have a little look at this. Let's have a look at that. Or they'll just ring you up and say, can you leave me alone? In which case, all of it's good because you're getting yeah. the response. But you've just yeah. got to make sure. And sometimes it can feel a bit awkward. Um, I, I certainly, if, if you don't feel awkward in your follow-up, you're not doing it enough. And that, right. that is one of the things my mentor has always told me, and it's always worked really well. Um, so you just need to make sure that you're consistent and persistent in that, in that follow-up, but in a nice manner that is genuinely trying to help people. So yeah. the woman with 11 units, it's just like, I've been having a really good think about this, and I've got a few options that I think you're going to love. Mm -hmm. So I just I just love to sit you down and have a coffee with you. Give me 20 minutes, 30 minutes of your time, uh, because that would be great. Yeah. So um, it's almost like selling selling it to them. Uh, it's almost like selling it to sorry, my uh, I need to put some power in my uh, laptop. Uh, I've never read that before. Last minute warning. Boop, 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 boop. It's, it's selling something. You're not, you're not lying anything because you have. You've got information yeah. that you want to share, but don't share it down the phone. You need to get in front of them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And do that with the 20 units as well. Just say there's a few different ways that I can help and, and resolve this with you. Uh, you say you want a, a company that's up and running. We have a company, a sister company that's been running over four years which uh, is something else I want to talk to you about because, you know, we're not just here for the minute. We're here for the long term. And, of course, mm -hmm. 20 units is great. And, of course, 20 units as well. You can do rent to rent, but you could also look to manage them, you know, yeah. do management because you can take those so much quicker. Rent to rent, it might cost you a lot of money outlaying. Yeah. Uh, but, again, look at the numbers and see what works for you, and you can systematically start taking those in piece by piece. But yeah. really do work on that follow-up uh, and make sure you, you feel a little bit awkward. Yeah. OK, yeah, uh, doing it in a fun manner. So, you know, let's just say I got to the 10 o'clock one. I've still not heard anything. Three o'clock. Just me again. I, You know, I'm consistent. I like to follow up. Uh, and I, I am de genuinely just trying to get hold of you because, um, as I say, even if it's a Zoom call, even if you haven't got time for a coffee, let's just jump on a 20 minute Zoom call uh, or something like that. I can send you a link over. But I'm really excited to share um, what the ideas that I've got with you to help you out. So. Appreciate again. You're really, really busy. I'll try again tomorrow at 10 a.m. like I always do. Until I get hold of you. Yeah. <laughs> Who get like that?
I've never had, I've, I, I will say this genuinely, I've never had anybody ring me up and say, leave me alone. I've got them ringing me up saying, Come on, what is it? What, you, what do you want to tell me? Yeah. What is it? You know what I mean? It's just like, well, we've got a few different options that I can help you with. And I really like to just sit down with you and go through them. So uh, it's better for me if I can see your face and, and talk to you face to face. So either on Zoom or, or have a coffee or something, whatever is easiest for you. And that's normally when they'll say, well, I'll tell you what, 12 o'clock tomorrow, I can meet you at Costa or I can do a Zoom call or something like that. Mm -hmm. um uh yeah and, and just make sure that you and the money is in the follow-up as they say so if you've got those leads and those leads sound good and then you can do the same with the agents as well if you're still trying to get yeah. through to people and they're not getting back to you agents are a little bit because it's their job they normally get back to you better but um i would say you've got potentially and what's the what's the third rent to rent deal um, so this is a man I met through open rent. Um, I put it in the group the other day where he sort of is open for me to have these three units, but his AST is just a bit wary of it because he's had um, a letter from the council basically for noise and people coming and going from the property. So they've sort of sent him a, a letter, a threat, not a threatening letter, but a letter saying basically you're in an out of court area, you're not allowed HMOs, like if any further calls come in. We will sort of be following up with it. And what sort of property is it? Um, it's three semi-detached houses just in Durham City. And what, what's it got to do with an HMO? So I'm presuming that the next door neighbour must have called and said people are coming and going from the property and there's a lot of noise. So I think they might, the council's just sort of presumed that it was a HMO because of the amount of people coming and going from the property. So they sent a letter out just... Basically, so, warning. Really, people are using it as party houses. He's not managing it very well, is he? Yeah, pretty much. So, and what sort of clients are you looking at to put into your service accommodation units? Um, contractors. There you go. One day. Is that what you said to him? Yeah, I've said all this to him. Um, and he's he's totally up for it. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, but. Mm -hmm. So I would follow up with him and just say, have you had any more thoughts yeah. about how you can, or speaking to the mortgage company? Yeah, definitely. Well, I sent him a message back sort of saying, listen, we're going to work something out, like something will work out. Um, and then he sent me a number through for one of his friends that's also wanting to do SA on his property. So I rang him yesterday and he didn't answer, but now I'm going to ring him again today. At, and leave yeah, and say, I'm going to ring you back at three o'clock. Always leave a time. Always leave a time that you know you can do it as well. So if you are working, it's like, what time's my break? Right. If my break's at this time, I'll do it at this time. But leave it there and then set a reminder on your phone. Mm -hmm. So like an alarm clock thing that says yeah. call such and such. So it beeps yeah. and you've got no excuses because you you want to, you want them to know that you're somebody that follows through as well and persistent. Yeah. I like that. Well, I would personally, if somebody was pestering me and I needed your help. It would be like, oh, they're persistent and they're on time as well. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. But always leave a time. Always say, I'll get hold of you again. And Because if you just say, I'll try again later, well, that yeah. doesn't mean anything, does it? Maybe yeah. I'm off the hook. You're not going to try me again, are you? I can just mm -hmm. keep avoiding it. But if I know you're going to keep calling me two, two, two times a day until I answer, I'm letting you know uh, one way or other, either, no, nope, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. Or I'm going to speak to you and say, come on in. I need to find yeah. out what you're, what you're trying to tell me. Okay? Uh, yeah. So... Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is first and foremost, is don't be too disheartened. This is all part of the process. And I think you're knocking it out of the park. You're doing very, very well. You're so close to some deals. There'll be loads of people, actually, that are just like, Ellie, what are you on about? You know, three steps forward, four steps back. You're speaking to three different landlords. You're speaking to agents. You've got two agents on board. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah. so you want to be celebrating that and, and patting yourself on the back. because so I think that is truly amazing and good work. We've just now got to tweak a few things. Yeah? yeah. Push yourselves out there and make sure that we are following up consistently and persistently. You'll hear me say this all the time. So I would love and I am going to say thank you ever so much for agreeing to come on here and talk to me about this and obviously share what you're doing and things. I hope that I've managed to help you uh, in some small way, uh, shape or form, uh, and that you've taken anything from this. And if, 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 has it helped you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like just listening to you, sort of how you would speak to agents and things, it, it has really benefited. Um, and I'll definitely be following up now because I think that's definitely where I'm lacking. 
Yeah, well, you've got the system in place. You've got the you, you know the the CRM system. Mm -hmm. So get that set there. Get that to keep, keep, keep pushing on, yeah. and also do make sure on your CRM systems that anything they're telling you, knowledge wise, maybe about the family, maybe like going to Spain, jot all of those things down. Yeah. And say, oh, have you got any, you know, if you're in a conversation when you're following up with somebody, maybe it's been a few weeks. Oh, have you, have you booked any um, any flights to Spain now? Because you, you said last time that you enjoyed going there. Yeah. So it's little personal touches that will make you stand out from everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. Well, once again, thank you for doing this with me. I hope that you all get benefit from this. Uh, it's a training module that I've been wanting to do, but it's so much easier if somebody uh, talks to me and tells me what they're, you know, having, having issues with, what they're struggling with potentially. And then, of course, I can make sure that we point them in the right direction. So I'll speak to you all very soon. Thank you. So I'm sure you'll all agree that by tweaking a few things and a few ways and a few methods, you can get out there and you can achieve what you want to achieve. Now, this is why we have training out there to help you, to give you the roadmap to follow. So we have the Rent to Rent Business Builder. We have the Ultimate Service Accommodation Business Builder as well. The Rent to Rent Business Builder is predominantly about rent to rent and HMOs. Service Accommodation Business Builder is about building a service accommodation in different methods. So using rent to rent management, joint ventures, all of those great things. But visit thepropertyunleashed.com for free tools and resources. We have the Rent to Rent Business Builder Program ebook. We have the Service Accommodation ebook. We have a deal analyzer. We have master classes there as well. So get yourself over there. But equally to that, we do offer bespoken one to one coaching. I work with clients over 12 months. I don't like to work with anybody less than that. Why? Because I want to help you get you results. And we have sessions very much like the session that you've seen there, where you may be out there talking to people and not being getting traction in what you're trying to do. I can help by tweaking a few things, make sure that you get the results that you need to be getting to make sure that you're pushing your life forward and maximizing your efforts. Again, if you're interested in anything like that, visit thepropertyunleashed.com, scroll down to the one-to-one -one coaching and book a call with myself or a member of my team. And we'll be happy to see if we can help and support you. As I said at the beginning, Ellie has now got her first deal. So she's taken what she's learned here. She's implemented it. And that's all you have to do is take what you've learned, implement it, get out there, push yourself out of your own comfort zones to achieve more and you will achieve more. I hope you join me in the next episode. If you've enjoyed this, please feel free to share it. Please feel free to like it, follow it, subscribe to it and join me in the next episode. Bye for now. Thank you.